Let's do an example of calculating midpoint Riemann sums. So here are the directions. Calculate the midpoint Riemann sum for four and n rectangles for f of x equals five minus one half x squared on the interval from zero to two. Okay, so um, Riemann sums, once again, are just a way to approximate the area under a curve by dividing it into rectangles and then summing up the area of those rectangles. Um, now, midpoint Riemann sum, as you can see in this picture here, means that I'm using the midpoint of each rectangle to determine the height, right? So the, the midpoint there is uh, determining the height based on the function value. Okay, and then I've written down the formula for the midpoint Riemann sum. Um, so we've got the sum from k equals 1 to n, so we're summing over n rectangles, f of all of this stuff, okay? So as a whole, this is just giving the height of each rectangle. Now, this k minus 1 plus k over 2 part might look a little strange, but remember this is a midpoint, so that's just finding the midpoint um, of each rectangle. And then uh, we've got our delta x, which is the width of each rectangle. So essentially, we're just multiplying height times width times uh, for every rectangle and adding all those things up. Okay, so um, we're going to do this for four rectangles and n rectangles. Um, if you've been watching the other videos, we also did it for 400 rectangles in those. Um, so if you're interested in seeing that calculation, check out the videos on right endpoint and left endpoint Riemann sum if you want to see 400 rectangles. Um, but anyway, so let's start with four rectangles. Okay, so I look at my formula here and let's think about what pieces of information we need to know. Well, we need to know f of x, which is 5 minus 1 half x squared, and the interval again is from 0 to 2. Our formula has n in it, right? And in my case, n is 4 because I'm doing four rectangles. And my formula also has a. A is just a left-hand endpoint, so in this case it's 0, right? And that just comes from there, a is 0. Um, now, k is just my index of summation, okay, so that's, you can, it's kind of like my variable, and that's what I'm summing over. Um, now, delta x, I want to calculate, that's b minus a over n, which here is 2 minus 0 over 4, or 1 half. Okay, so the width of each rectangle is 1 half, which you can also see in this picture here. Okay, so now that we have all our information, we can plug into our expression. So k equals 1 to 4, f of 0 plus, so we've got this k minus 1 plus k over 2, um, which that form is good because it makes sense, right? You see that that's a midpoint. But for the purposes of calculation, I'm going to write that as 2k minus 1 over 2 times delta x, which is 1 half. That's all inside the function there, f of all of that, and then times 1 half outside. Okay, so that one half, this one half outside, is a constant multiple. So I can pull that out front of the summation. And so I end up with f of 2k minus 1 over 4. So what this notation then means, that my next step is going to be to take 2k minus 1 over 4 and plug it into my function. So if I do that, it's going to look like this. Okay, my function is 5 minus 1 half x squared, so 5 minus 1 half, and I'm taking this whole expression and plugging it in for x. So all of that squared. Okay, now I need to work all this out. Because ultimately I'm looking for a number, right? I'm looking for a numeric value. So I need to get this to a form where I can use my summation, um, my summation formulas. Um, okay, so one half, and I still have my sum, five minus one half times, okay, this is 2k minus one times 2k minus one, because it's squared over 16. So we need to FOIL that out. So five minus, this is one over 32 times, if I FOIL that, I get four, k squared minus 2k minus 2k, so minus 4k total plus 1. All right, moving on along, 
um, we should go ahead and distribute that 1 over 32. So if I do that, okay, so I've got 4 over 32, that's 1 over 8. So 1 eighth k squared plus 1 eighth k, be careful with your signs there, minus 1 over 32. Okay. Now I'm only doing four rectangles here, so really, I mean, I could just plug in k equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and add them together. Um, but let's practice using the sum formulas, because if you're doing a larger number of rectangles, like 400, like I did in the other videos, then you're definitely not going to want to add all those up by hand, right? So we want to be able to use the sum of formulas correctly. Um, so, well, actually, first of all, one more thing I can do here to simplify this is do 5 minus 1 over 32. Um, and that ends up being 159 over 32. Okay, so I have that, and then my minus 1 eighth k squared plus 1 eighth k. Okay. Um, now, I know what each of these pieces, I know how to use a sum formula on each of these pieces, right? I've got a constant, I've got a k squared term, and I've got a k term. To make it a little bit more straightforward, we could break this up. Okay, so this one half is in front of everything, but I can break the sum up term by term. So the sum of 159 over 32, I can pull constant multiples out front too. So 1 eighth times the sum of k squared plus 1 eighth times the sum of k. And now I can definitely use my sum formulas on that, right? That's like the perfect form to use the sum formulas on. Um, so let's review what those formulas are. Alright, so here are the summation formulas and go ahead and apply them. So the first thing I have here is the sum of a constant, 159 over 32. So that's this row here. Um, it's just that constant times n, and n is 4. So 159 over 32 times 4 minus 1 eighth and then k squared with n equals 4. Okay, so n is 4 n plus 1 is 5, 2n plus 1 is 9, and that's all over 6, plus 1 eighth, and then the sum of k. So k is here, so 4 times 5 over 2. And now we just need to evaluate this, okay? So this is something that you could just put in your calculator, um, or work it out by hand if you want. But if you work that out, you should get 8.6875. Okay, so this is my estimate for the area under the curve. Now, in previous videos, I did right and left Riemann sums, okay? And so on the right Riemann sum, I got 8.125. And on the left Riemann sum for four rectangles, I got 9.125. So it makes sense that this would be in between them, right? Because it's the midpoint Riemann sum. Okay, so that at least, at least makes sense. Okay, so now let's do this for just n rectangles in general, okay? So just for n rectangles, I want to get a formula. We're going to use the same approach, okay? So once again, the midpoint Riemann sum formula looks like this. F of a plus k minus 1 plus k over 2 times delta x, all that times delta x. Okay, and my function was um, 5 minus 1 half x squared, and my interval was from 0 to 2. So this is going to be exactly the same process, except for doing it, instead of doing it for a number, n equals a number, I'm just going to keep n as a, um, as a variable, as n. So then, um, if I plug in my information, right, I'm, I'm going to have still a equals 0, and let's figure out delta x. So delta x is b minus a over n, so 2 minus 0 over n, or 2 over n. So then area equals the sum from k equals 1 to n, f of a, which is 0, plus, once again, I'm going to go ahead and write this as 2k minus 1 over 2, times delta x, which is 2 over n, and then times 2 over n. Okay, 
Now what I can do is 2 over n, this 2 over n, is actually a constant with respect to the summation, right? Because I'm summing over k, k is my index of summation, so 2 over n isn't changing within my sum. So I can pull that out front like this. Okay, then inside the sum I still have my f of, okay, these 2's cancel, so this is just 2k minus 1 over n. Well, now, like I did before, I want to take that expression, 2k minus 1 over n, and plug it into my function. So 5 minus 1 half times x squared. So 2k minus 1 over n quantity squared. And now comes a lot of algebra, right? We need to break that down so that we'll be able to use our summation formulas. So 5 minus 1 half times 2k minus 1 times 2k minus 1 over n squared. Okay, so that's 5 minus 1 over 2n squared, and I can FOIL that out like I did before. So it was 4k squared minus 4k plus 1. So notice I'm doing the exact same steps, right? Um, so 5 minus, so let's distribute that 1 over n squared. So 4k squared over 2n squared plus 4k over 2n squared minus 1 over 2n squared. All right. Now, um, I have some constant, right? I have 5, that's a constant minus 4k squared over 2n squared. So there's my k squared term, right, that I can use my summation formula on. The 4 over 2n squared is just a constant multiple. Remember, we, could, we said we could pull n's out front. And same with these other terms. Either I've got constants or powers of k. So I can split this up, just like I did before, and then use my sum formulas. Okay, so 2 over n's out front of everything. I have the sum from k equals 1 to n of 5, minus, I'm going to pull my constants out front. So 4 over 2 n squared, which is the same as 2 over n squared. Sum of k squared plus 2 over n squared sum of k minus the sum of 1 over n squared, or sorry, 1 over 2 n squared. All right, and now I just use my sum formulas. So the sum of a constant was 5 times n, or that constant times n, so 5n in this case, minus 2 over n squared, and now the formula for k squared, which was n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1 over 6, plus 2 over n squared times the sum of k, so that's n, n plus 1 over 2, minus, and here we have the sum of the constant, so it's just that constant times n. Okay, so let's clean up a little bit inside the bracket. So I have 5n minus, so here I have a product, um, I have an n's in the top and bottom, so I can do a little canceling there, can cancel out a factor of 2, so I end up with n plus 1, 2n plus 1 over 3n plus, okay, here I can cancel out 2s and a factor of n. So I have n plus 1 over n minus, and here I can factor out a can, uh, cancel out a factor of n, so 1 over 2n. And then as my last step, I'm just going to um, distribute that 2 over n. Okay, so that's going to give me 10 minus 2 n plus 1, 2 n plus 1 over 3 n squared plus 2 n plus 1 over n squared minus, okay, so here the 2's are going to cancel, so just 1 over n squared. And maybe you could simplify this a little more, but we're going to stop here. This gives, an, gives us an expression, 
for the midpoint area approximation for any n that we may choose. Right? So if I plugged in n equals 4, I would get the same answer as I did up above. Or I could plug in any n. Right? The bigger the n I plug in, the better my approximation. All right. So remember that there's also videos for left and right endpoints. If you want to watch those, um, uh, you can watch those as well.